It's the Lake Cretaceous, somewhere in what will eventually be called North Africa. You live in a lush delta. The sun is rising, and it is beautiful. Though, you don't really notice that right now, because you're running for your life. As soon as you and your siblings hatched from your eggs, you started to be eaten. Talk about spawn camping. You run as fast as you can, but with your entire body only being about a foot long, your little feet can only carry you so far, and it's caught up to you. Well, sh**. Let's rewind. A few months ago, your mom pops you out along with your siblings. She stays near your nest to keep away any predators, and once you hatch, she immediately scoops you up to carry you to the wetlands. And though you almost had a heart attack, this is the safest place you can be. Right now, basically everything can eat you. Big fish can swallow you whole, crocs can bite you in half, and even your siblings might see you as a snack. But before long, you get spit out in what looks like a small pond. Yeah, it's safer than the rivers, but not by much. Predators are everywhere. Your best defense is hiding in the horsetails, or better yet, sticking close to mom. But sooner or later, they're gonna catch you alone. So you need to grow, which means eating like your life depends on it. Because it does. You start with the easy stuff, frogs, bugs, and the occasional dead fish. But when you check to see how much progress you've made, you're gonna need something a bit more nutritious. Standing at the edge of the water, you know fish are everywhere, but you just don't know how to catch them. You tried hunting like the crocodiles, but that doesn't work. So you decide you need your own approach. You start crafting the perfect method. And what is it you might ask? Well, just copying your mom. To catch fish, she lets them come to her. Her teeth, unlike most theropods, are round and conical, designed to pluck fish right out of the water. She just waits with her mouth open, using her snout to detect the slightest touch, and once she does, dinner is served. It seems easy enough, until you try it yourself. Catching fish feels more like grabbing a slippery bar of soap. Clearly, this is going to take some practice. For the next few months, that's your life. Dodging crocs, studying your mom, and honing your fish hunting skills. It doesn't come easy, but at least you're making some progress. Because you're now a juvenile Spinosaurus, and about 9 feet long. Life is finally looking up. Just kidding, because you're now on your own. The second your mom saw you were starting to figure things out, she went to get some milk. And that pond you've been calling home? That was just the tutorial level. Now it's time to move on to the real deal. The rivers. Here, the prey are massive. Basically, every other catch could land you on an episode of River Monsters. So, you decide to give it a try. The current here is strong, but your paddle-like tail keeps you steady. But out of nowhere, an adult Spinosaurus comes charging at you. Apparently, you missed the signs. You were fishing in his spot. You see, adult Spinosaurus being so large require a ton of food. So the best fishing spots are guarded by very territorial, and quite frankly, very rude adults. Though sadly, that's not the only issue these rivers have to offer. In your previous run-ins, the biggest crocs were only about 10 feet long. But here, the biggest can grow close to 30 feet. Thankfully, most of the time, they'll leave you alone. Well, probably. And maybe you're being a little paranoid, but every shadow in the water fills you with terror. So you decide, screw being semi-aquatic, you're going on land. Here, you find the remains of a pterosaur. You're more of a fish guy yourself, but a free meal is a free meal. No way you're passing that up. For a moment, you start questioning why you'd ever want to go back to the water. The land is just way better. Then you're hit by reality. Oh, that's why. This is a Carcharodonosaurus. They're giant theropods that patrol the riversides. If one of them catches you, you're toast. Literally. Now, you're caught between two worlds. One ruled by bloodthirsty crocs, and the other by giant theropods. And there's no use in even trying to hide. Your sail, now much larger, feels like a big neon sign on your back. Still, your sail isn't completely useless. It helps regulate your body temperature, though not exactly handy in this moment. But it's also a tool for communication and intimidation. You signal for him to back off, but he's not listening. Fortunately, the key to your success is adaptability. In the water, you can outmaneuver a theropod. And on land, you can outrun a croc. With your mix of traits and a little bit of luck, you can escape most danger. But with all this running around, you're starting to feel hungry again. It's time to fish. This time in an unoccupied spot. And though the catches aren't so great, each one fuels your body to grow bigger and stronger. 
In a short time, you're 20 feet long and tipping the scales at around 2,500 pounds. But don't be too concerned, because you can always use the big boned excuse. Spending so much time in the water has made your bones very dense, adding to that massive weight. And though you're not fully grown, you're already a force to be reckoned with. You're swimming faster, biting harder, and deadlier than ever. It's time to settle some scores. First on your list, crocodiliforms. The biggest are all still untouchable, but the smaller and medium sized ones are a different story. You spot a group enjoying the sun on the shoreline. What once seemed like a nightmare now looks like an all you can eat buffet. You move carefully through the mangrove trees, making sure not to be spotted. And when the moment's right, you charge. The crocs, slow and caught off guard, barely make it back to the water before you grab a few in your mouth. Your first crocodile meal. Delicious. You're feeling good now and have earned the respect of the other Spinosaurus. You're the new kid on the block, but to match your new style, you figure you need a better fishing spot to go with it. Scouting the area, you set your sights on a tired old Spinosaurus. His sluggish movements make it clear. He can't keep up with the competition anymore. You confront him. Your intimidating size and aggressive display are too much for him to handle. With a defeated look, he retreats, leaving you victorious. And in possession of the prime fishing spot you've been eyeing. Here, the fish are huge. Oncopristus, over 20 feet long. Colacanths, over 15. The food is almost too much. At this point, you're unstoppable. By about 18, you're nearly fully grown. You're weighing about seven tons and close to 40 feet long, but you're looking a little funny. Ah, I know, you're wearing the wrong outfit. Nope, nada. No, no? Ah, there it is. You see, Spinosaurus changes more times than a teenager before prom night. Every year, scientists make some new discovery and boom, a new Spinosaurus comes out. So if you want to stay up to date with the trends, you're going to look like this for now. You're the largest predator in your environment. The water and land are your domain and nothing can stand in your way. And while most of the time you can be found standing in the shallow water catching fish, you do occasionally go on land mostly to rest, but sometimes to grab some free meals. Even Carcharodontosaurus, that are nearly as big as you, will be scared off by your size, aided by the fact that your sail makes you look a lot bigger than you really are. You've gotten everything you've ever wanted. Strength, your own territory, respect, but something is missing. Love. And perfect timing, because it's mating season. Finding a mate isn't easy. Sometimes you have to fight other Spinosaurus, but even when you don't, matching still isn't guaranteed, because your sail has to be attractive. But you are eventually able to find a mate. You do this by pushing blood through your sail and winning her over. In a little bit of time, you have your own babies. You've accomplished everything you wanted, but the years have been hard on you. Holding back others from taking your fishing spot has aged you fast. And just like everything else, you can only stay on top for so long. One day, just like you had before, a young male comes and takes your territory. With the loss of your fishing spot, you slowly get weaker and weaker. As you look out at the sunset, you figure this is as good of a spot as any. If you like this video, you'll probably like that video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. Jehona out.